forward just 48 hours away from the 15th anniversary of the deadliest terror attack in American history, September 11, 2001. And America still faces security threats on a number of fronts. Uh, today, a video appeared online of the uh, leader of Al Qaeda reportedly speaking in Arabic, saying, quote, we mark in these days the passage of nearly 15 years since the blessed invasions in Washington, New York, and Pennsylvania. Now, this video comes as the debate rages here at home as to how the best to combat the growing threat of ISIS. In the most recent poll, Fox News shows a record high 54% of American voters feel that the U.S. is less safe today than it was before 9-11. Joining me now, Congressman Ron DeSantis, a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, thanks for joining me. Um, it, it really speaks volumes that uh, that Americans feel so unsafe this this far after or since 9/11, doesn't it? Well, it, it does, but I think that there's justification for it, Charles. If you look now, there are more Islamic jihadists operating under a much wider berth of territory than there was on September 11th. I mean, Osama bin Laden hatched that plot in Afghanistan. Well, you have terrorists in Afghanistan, you have terrorists in Iraq, you have terrorists in Northern Africa, you have terrorists in Central Africa, obviously a lot of homegrown terrorists in Western Europe. And then the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, has been empowered with this unprecedented Iran deal. So I think that there's justification for that feeling. And, and, and this is going to be, obviously, it's turning out to be one of the key differences uh, between the two presidential candidates. Uh, Hillary Clinton saying no troops, uh, boots on the ground. And, I, and I, listen, she hasn't made the distinction between the forces who are on the ground already and combat forces. I, I'll, I'll give her the benefit that maybe is what she's suggesting. And Donald Trump, who, who's, who has a plan in mind, wants to meet with the commanders, but in the past it seemed like he's willing to put troops in there and perhaps an overwhelming force to get this job done once and for all. How, how do you see this playing out ultimately? Because this is, a, this is a battle that many say could go on for a long time if we're not decisive. Well, Hillary is hamstrung by Obama's policy. She's pledged to follow those policies. Those policies have been ineffective. And I think she does things with these ground troops that annoy me because what she said in the past is, I won't use ground troops, only special forces, as if they don't count as boots on the ground. And when you send special operations forces, they don't just go alone. They have to have support personnel there. So the distinction she's drawing, I don't think, makes sense. Uh, she just doesn't want to say that she would support anyone on the ground. And I think Donald Trump has more freedom to take a look at this. His fingerprints aren't on the failures. He can get the best generals together and come up with a different approach so that we can start making progress in this fight. Uh, we came in uh, this morning to news that North Korea has detonated their, their most powerful nuclear warhead to date. Uh, and, and, of course, we know that their missile technology is getting better and better. Uh, Ed Royce, uh, who is in charge of your committee, uh, talked about aggressively enforcing the sanctions that are out there. Is that going to be enough? Uh, you know, what, what has to be done to stop these bad actors, particularly the more belligerent ones like, like, uh, like the one in North Korea? Well, unfortunately, I think uh, not just North Korea, Iran, uh, Vladimir Putin and, and other people are looking and they have another four to five months of this administration. So I think you're going to see more activity like this because they know that this is the time to do it. Um, I think we absolutely should do the toughest possible sanctions on North Korea. Uh, but they've been being provocative for a long time, uh, as long as the Obama administration's been so, in and, power. And with respect I think to that, they'll continue. And with all due respect, then, uh, what happens if they, if they just don't react? I mean, millions of people have died there from starvation. Uh, the, you know, this is the only thing they've got going for them. You've got a maniac in charge. What does America ultimately do when they get a nuke and they can put it on a missile that could hit Alaska or California? Oh, well, it's a, it's a very serious threat. Some of the sanctions we've done have really focused on their illicit activity. They make money in the drug trade and money laundering and all these other illicit, uh, in, with illicit endeavors. So focusing on that is good because that really chokes the regime and it's not as much choking the American people. Of course, that regime is really responsible for starving those millions and millions yeah. of people who are effectively imprisoned uh, in that communist state. And they love their lux luxury goods, don't they? The handbags and the premium liquor and all that stuff. So yeah, let's choke them any way we can. Uh, have a great weekend, sir, and appreciate you coming on the show.